So hi guys, I hope you all are doing well and in good health. Today we have Palak Sundi. Uh, she was my friend in bachelor's and today I've requested her to share her experience as an Indian student in US. So she'll be talking a lot more stuff about, you know, pursuing PhD program in US because we don't have a lot of clear picture with us. So I just want you to have some concrete data with you before you, you know, try to opt for, like you decide to go for a PhD program. You should not just randomly do it, whether it is in from India or abroad. So the aim of conducting this session is just to provide you some concrete data, okay? So Palak did, like, as I mentioned, she was my batchmate. So we both did uh, chemistry honors from Hansraj College, University of Delhi. Then I moved to uh, IIT Rudki. She, she decided to pursue uh, her master's from DU and then MTech, then PhD. So she'll be, uh, of course, uh, explaining her career journey. So let's hear from uh, her and then we'll move on to the question sessions. Yeah, Palak. Thanks, Anu. Yeah, thank you for your uh, kind introduction, Anu. <laughs> and uh, we both are meeting after such a long time and through this interview, I'm like, feeling very happy to be a part of this journey with her because it's happening for a good cause and mm -hmm. through our question and answers we will be like guiding other students so that's the best thing mm -hmm. and uh, during the interview I'll be talking more about my career journey but as Anu has already mentioned uh, I started with BSc then we did then I did MSc in organic chemistry uh, then my intent was to uh, get a PhD position in India I was not uh, you know, interested to do it abroad. Uh, but then um, uh, what I wanted was that I should do it from a good institution. There are so many good institutions in India, very prestigious ones. But uh, my aim was to go into the IIT. And at that time, there was a program of MTech and then coming yourself into PhD after, after one year. So I thought of entering into that program. And uh, when I was in MTech in IIT Roorkee, uh, I also applied for another scholarship wherein you work as an exchange student in Germany and you get all the, you know, all the benefits of working there. Uh, you get to know people, uh, their different projects, then you get guidance from German professors. So like when I got that exposure, I thought that I should pursue it from abroad. So I will talk more about that. Uh, but currently I'm working in the US and it's my last year in the PhD program and I'm working in the field of surface nanobioscience. Mm -hmm. So, Palak, mm -hmm. I really yeah. hope that you'll wind up your PhD super soon and you will be awarded it. Yeah, I, guess, I like, hope I so. want to uh, mention that Palak is a DARD fellow. The, the program she was talking about, it's called DARD, you guys know. So, in later sessions, we can request her again to share her experience and, you know, the tips. Because I, I, I know, like, a lot of people uh, want to have that exchange kind of setup, like, to pursue PhD halfway there and get an exposure and all that. So, uh, we'll be inviting her again from, like, I, I hope that she'll give uh, some time uh, to it. Yeah, uh, of course, because that, that scholarship actually stays changed my life and my view towards PhD and research so not many people are aware of it when they are when it comes to chemistry and RP but I think people from engineering back they must be knowing about this all those who are in IIT and in the engineering department yeah. but uh, not in basic sciences yeah so I think that if, will be something yeah even if like people have heard about it they don't know how to go about it so that's the yeah, big yeah. thing they don't know because when yeah. we just open the application form they ask you to submit a research proposal finding a professor it's all tedious so people cannot you know figure out by themselves like and then they just drop the plan so we'll try to address that hurdle too in next session mm -hmm. so now coming yeah. to the first question Palak like how to fetch a PhD position abroad as a you know foreign national like how easy it is how difficult it is so I would say that getting a PhD position is not tough but getting a position in the lab uh, who is doing research uh, according to your previous experience that will be challenging suppose you have done research in say biomaterials or in uh, electronics or uh, say in organic synthesis but the kind of synthesis you have done previously 
uh, if you get a lab which can actually expand that field for you and you will gain more knowledge in the same direction that might be challenging so mm -hmm. sometimes people they just switch their position like in masters if they they have done research in organic synthesis they might uh, be getting a position in, as a phd student in a lab and just to you know just they just get attracted to that position and they just you know grab that opportunity just because they want to do phd but if, if that's not going to be of your interest then you won't be able to survive for five years in yeah, that position yes. so it will be better to look for a job that has the research that actually makes you like interested in it and do add something more in that field so so like you want not, to say just don't look I'll grab the whatever offer you will be having look for the right offer which you know which yeah. keeps you driving okay. which over overlaps with the kind of research you have done previously as a master student or in your thesis and it's it's always good to network with people who are in those areas like working in different uh, fields because they can give you a better uh, idea about it because sometimes the inside picture is different. You can see the website of a professor and it's like very fancy looking and, mm -hmm. uh, but the inside picture, you won't be knowing. So it's always better to talk to the students working in the lab, uh, go meet them if you get a chance or like set up Zoom meetings, just like we are doing and just talk to them about the research they are doing. So yeah, networking okay. is very important. This point is somewhat same in India also, like don't randomly join any lab, big information. So for US also, it applies. It doesn't mean yeah. that you are, you know, getting a PhD offer from US, US uh, university, just straight away join it. So this homework has to be done at your end in whatever country you are applying so it is one yeah, that's true. thing so Pallad, i just want to know like is masters really required to pursue phd program in us for for foreign nationals like this was one of the so questions. i think in our country it is important because we don't have a four-year bachelor's so they want a four-year degree before you okay. join phd so it's like three years for us in bachelor's then two years master's so then only we can jump into the phd program okay, and, um, okay. so what about like if somebody has done btech or something some four degree or bachelor's so it will it will they, be they can they can apply for a phd position okay. yeah so are there any exams for it? Like we, as you know, that India conducts national level exams, be it CSI or UGC, GATE, and some have the DST inspired. What is the criteria? Is it like GRE, TOEFL or GRE subjective? And people usually ask me, but I don't know much about it. I, I can just Google and tell you. So maybe you are the right person to address this question. So uh, when it comes to exams, it depends from university to university. Okay. Sometimes... And uh, the picture has also changed after the pandemic because some uh, universities have uh, completely like removed uh, IELTS or TOEFL exams. Okay. Uh, it's it's not required anymore. But earlier it used to be GRE, and GRE can be of two types uh, related to your subject, and it can be the basic GRE. Uh, but that also depends on the university you are applying in. They have their own criteria mentioned on their website, so like thoroughly go through it. And then you prepare for those exams. But I think uh, general uh, GRE will do for most of the university. Okay. You don't need like the subjective subject. one, the okay. subject. But like, and, yeah, so but like uh, you mentioned that the uh, after pandemic, the situation has changed. GRE is not anymore required. Uh, um, so, uh, and also like IELTS and TOEFL, which are language uh, yeah. that also like required. But uh, I have heard for a few universities, they don't need it anymore. Instead, uh, what they offer you is take an English course in the university when you arrive. So for one semester, they will let you take that EAP class. Uh, okay. And that's for the foreign nationals. So uh, there, there are like verbal listening, all these activities involved in that course. So you don't have to like give the exam anymore. Okay. Yeah, because here I want to mention, because I al already tested, because I never wrote that TOEFL and this these hmm. kind of exams. So in some fe uh, fellowships also, what I've tried to do it, like to get a certificate from humanities department of say IIT Roorkee or IIT Delhi or mm -hmm. of the university and they'll mention that through yeah, like whole of your education is in English, was in 
in, was in English medium. And so like you are eligible for that. And then you can, you know, talk to the program coordinator or say uh, to which, uh, whichever university you will be applying. So if it works well and good, if it doesn't work, then you can, you know, figure out. But it's always better to just ask first rather than, you know, randomly following any stuff. So for criteria or requirements, you have to follow uh, the universities individually right like, yes yeah. like when i started the process i was looking at labs which had uh, the kind of research i was looking for and then i emailed the professor just to know whether he has funding he has vacancy because before applying and putting in your uh, money for the application because application is also not cheap like it oh. it costs you like four thousand five thousand per application oh, so uh, you need to be like uh, fully Very prepared pissed. for the university you are joining before filling in the application so it's better you first reach out to that professor and ask if he's interested uh, in taking you as his phd student and um, after that you can also contact the graduate advisor of that department and he can list you all the um, criteria, all the exams you need to, uh, okay. you know, pass before uh, coming in the department. Okay, so this is very good. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. like, don't just randomly keep on applying. Because uh, from this, I can recall when I was in IIT Delhi. So one of the uh, guy told me that his friend has spent thousands of rupees in applying and he didn't get any of, you know, the position. And he was then struggling with a lot of depression and all. So it can happen. So be very wise and, you know, like as Pal uh, Palak has guided, like reach out to the professor, discuss and then apply and apply very systematically, not haphazardly. It doesn't like in this, like in, we have very contrasting uh, thing in India because the application process, we, it costs nothing, almost nothing. So mm -hmm. we can apply in 10, 20, 30, 50. So you, you don't have to do this while you are applying anywhere. So that's a very good point you know, like mentioned. And also some professors are always interested to have a Zoom meeting with you just to have like an informal conversation mm -hmm. uh, so that you can also know the professor and he can know you as well so okay. that's also something you can ask for when you are emailing the professor so like frame okay. it nicely and okay. just introduce yourself and your previous background to him and also like give give that professor enough time like I think ahead of time at least give like one semester for this entire process, process. To, okay. Uh, okay to complete yeah okay. so like I want to ask Palak uh, can you uh, talk about like how to figure out, like how to choose a guide, like how to go about it. Because in India, you know, like if we are applying within our country, we know, uh, we know, we have a lot of information about the universities, about the faculties, etc. But while applying abroad, it, it's a big task to figure out. So how to go about it? Like how did you manage to do that? Yeah, I think I would repeat the same point. I I knew like in which area I wanted to work in, like the broad field. And then I also selected a niche area in that broad field. So there were not a lot of labs working on that specific field. So it was easy in my case to look for uh, those kind of labs. So I was only looking for professors working in that specific field. Uh, and then I figured out a list of professors. I was going to their website, looking at their publications and also talking with the lab members. Uh, if that is not going to help you, uh, there's also another thing you can do. Like when once you join the university, uh, in my university, that is a thing that you interview four or five professors. Okay. And then you can also change uh, your option. Like, if you have in your SOP, which is the statement of purpose, if you have listed a professor that you are interested to work with, you can always change. You always have that option. Like when, once you join that university, because okay. they always let you talk to other professor, visit their labs, That's uh, and you can always change it. Okay. So like the discretion lies with the student. That is the mm -hmm. plus yeah. point. Like if you are considering, you know, pursuing PhD abroad, because this thing won't work in India, because when you... Yeah. Uh, like when you sit in an interview and once uh, one particular professor has you know uh, selected you you know to shift the lab it's a big challenge in India like it doesn't work that way like as Palak told like the, the flexibility and I have seen that uh, students working for like three years in a lab 
Uh, they, that person changed the lab because there was like some dispute that happened between the professor and the student and nobody questioned sure. like there was no grudges between the professor or the student like they maintained that kind of okay. uh, so, dignity so, and yeah yeah so see like the work culture is pretty good like I, I, I can say because this kind of environment I can openly say that uh, we cannot you know witness in Indian universities as per se because a lot of things a lot of dynamics are involved so it's it's a good point like I really like this if it's there so you should use it because then because it's your PhD right you cannot survive in a field which you are not liking you are, cannot survive in a like lab which you are not liking so it's all if you are provided with that element of discretion like I think it, nothing better than that so it's it and is, I feel lab mates are also like equally important because yeah. you'll be spending your whole day with them so just go and meet them as well yeah because I I when I recall my PhD days I know like I just came back home just to sleep so whole whole day whole day we are spending in lab like, so lab in university. you need to have like a peaceful environment some fun people and yeah. like good research happening around you that's that's good yeah so okay you talked about GRE and all that stuff so like Palak, on a very personal note, I want to just know, like I'm curious, like how did you decide that, like how did you decide like you will be pursuing research as a career, like and what was that turning point, like which made you do that? So like as a person, I'll be like very honest with you that I never set goals for myself, like a 10 year plan or like, you know, I, I never think like that. It's always like baby steps. And I, I always plan my day and my week, but never like, okay, for next two years, I this is my plan. I will never do that. So like when I was in school, I knew oh, science was my thing. So that was like one thing that I chose when I was in school. Then when I was doing undergrad, I knew that, okay, either I'll go for chemistry or biochemistry because as much as I love chemistry, I also used to love bio. Uh, so that was a hard decision to make, but then I went chemistry. As a, then when it was, yeah, when it was master's, uh, that was an easy choice for me because I, I really like organic chemistry. There were a lot of synthetic chem, uh, um experiments involved in it so I really like to like work in the lab and making new compounds stuff like that but mm -hmm. then eventually doing that I was like I'm getting bored of it so what is uh, new in chemistry like what else I can learn so yeah that period that transition period was very difficult for me because I didn't know whether I want to stay in India whether I should go out for mm -hmm. PhD directly so I was giving myself enough time to explore more fields and then I learned about um, another um, course, which is Advanced Methods of Chemical Analysis. So they were teaching like um, advanced techniques for characterizing materials in IIT Roorkee. So I, I applied for that. And I knew that if I would like this thing there and the uh, course and the lab, like I'll get enough time to explore labs while I'm doing MTech there. So I knew that, okay, if I like everything there, I, I will continue with PhD. So MTech was a good way to enter IIT Roorkee. So that was my plan. Okay. And I went ahead with that. Uh, then when I was uh, studying there, I little did I know, but uh, I had friends in other engineering departments. I had very few friends in my uh, department, yeah. but my roommate and, you know, other yeah, people yeah. in the hostels, hostels most yeah. of them are yeah from yeah. engineering departments. So they were like talking about this DAD scholarship mm -hmm. and... Um, I was like, maybe it is only for the engineering department students. It's not for us. So then one of my friends, uh, she questioned that, uh, Palak, you are also in um, a technological field and that is also considered in the engineering background. So I think you should ask someone in your department if they have ever applied in that. So uh, I went to uh, my professor, also to the uh, head of the department, everyone, I asked everyone <laughs> in my department, also students, seniors, if at all anyone has ever applied in this field, but yeah, nobody has ever applied because I think they didn't know about it or even if they knew, I, they were like, I'll add to it, yeah. I don't know. 
So yeah, like I uh, totally agree with the like, you know, taking small steps because I am the person like no five, 10 years plan. I don't know what is, you know, after a year. So yeah. uh, so in these two things, like I am like, like Palak only. And uh, regarding the dart stuff, Palak, what I have realized between IIT Roorkee and IIT Delhi, in IIT Delhi, it's a compulsion. You won't believe like uh, those whoever is performing good, the department would support the a student to apply for this, you know, uh, this fellowship and all. And because uh, this dad thing, I didn't heard in uh, Rudki also, although I have a habit of, you know, uh, web surfing a lot, like in my free time, I was Googling. Mm-hmm. So I knew that fellowship, but at that time in my master's also, like I never thought of it. And I, I don't even know whether I'm eligible or not. And I think for it is for MTech, like MTech people can certainly apply that. But that support right. was missing in, you know, chemistry department, or you say like, uh, like they were, it, it was not very formal. When I come to this uh, IIT Delhi, I found it like those who are pursuing this M- M- MT, the, it is, it's serve on the plate. Like you perform well, I know, professors yeah. will, you know, support you. And then you can just. Because when I met like students coming in Germany uh, from IIT Delhi, yeah, they said like it was a cakewalk. Our, our professor only found a professor there. Yeah. and the lab for them and I'm like oh god I found that professor myself like exactly. after emailing hundreds of professors and then I found a lab on my own nobody helped so that, that's I was true. like because this, 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 this difference I uh, usually like I, I saw this difference when I you know from one IIT to other IIT I switched and it was a very different to you like because when I applied for that summer internship program I only figured because we don't know now and I like I can quote here because see most of the time you won't be getting any support like Palak has told she'll be you know reaching out to a lot of many people be it HOD be it to different professors friends people from outside your department you have to do it nobody will do it for yourself like for you and I did it when I was uh, looking for some summer internships to, as you know, to get some exposure. So I got that TIGP Taiwan International Graduate Program. Mm-hmm. So for that also, like I was searching for the professor. <laughs> then, like it was at that time, you are lost because you don't know how to do it. But over and over time, like you learn by yourself. But in IIT Delhi, uh, it was somewhat a cakewalk. Like I figured out, oh my god! Like, just... but I still feel like it's mm-hmm. not just the institution responsible for this true, I think true, students yeah. are also responsible always, always. since nobody ever participated how will the professors, professors know that know. Okay, students exactly. are and interested in this how will the department know that student wants to do that because everybody yeah, that's support true. you but you have to you know prepare you have to come up with your homework that see this yeah. is the thing, yeah. this, this is the, the next thing you, you want to do and this is how you will do and at what stage you will be needing their guidance then only they'll, you know, they can figure it out. Yeah. If you just And after they... I did that, then it kind of opened doors for the yeah. juniors. And they also yeah. participated yeah. until now. Like, they thanked me that, oh, okay, oh. through you, we know, like, how so to do this. You are the pioneer like, wow. of this dance stuff in the IIT. Really I think. About it. Yeah, no, I can openly say that. So, <laughs> she's the pioneer. So, I think she's the best person to, you know, to yeah. have contact. Question. Yeah, so, <laughs> anything about that? Yeah, just comment below <laughs> so yeah very good yeah like i really liked it yeah but like, like coming to how useful the mtech program was for you like since it's it's a master's level degree right we usually as a you know a students pursuing uh wait So, Palak, I, maybe I'll be uh, recording another session with you if it goes down. So, we'll be uh, continuing that. Okay. So, uh, uh, we'll entertain one more question here. Then we'll start mm-hmm. with the other meeting. So, I was about to ask, like, since both are master's degree, you know, and we are students from natural sciences, we usually believe that, uh, okay, let's do master's and then straight away to PhD. So how, like, how beneficial was this MTech program for you? And do you suggest students to take the same path as you did? Or you just ask them to pursue master's and just straight away move to PhD program? 
I would say like if you were all like if the students are very clear about the fact that they want to do PhD, then yeah, go ahead after masters. If you have cleared GRF or NET, go ahead with that in India. Or if you have passed the other eligibility tests uh, to do it from the abroad, then yeah, go ahead with that. But if you are not very clear, you want to uh, give yourself some time and uh, get some research experience because uh, in MTech it was not just coursework it was just for I think two semesters and the last year was uh, in the lab so I used to work in the lab um, so it was kind of a hybrid thing like there was coursework also there was lab work also for one entire year so that kind of gave me idea okay this is how PhD will look like if I want to do research because sometimes I have seen that after masters people join PhD and then after two years, they feel like, oh, there's no growth and we are stuck. Now what to do? So I just wanted to give myself some time. Mm -hmm. And if I knew like if I would like it from there, I can go in whichever direction I want to. I can stop right there or I can move further. True. And for me, like, yeah, gaining knowledge, it's never going to harm anyone. So yeah. if you are learning something else in chemistry, that is always like beneficial for you. And, yeah. yeah so like very good point like rather than jumping on to straight away PhD and then repenting because I know lot many chunk of people in the department they criticize yeah. the PhD program every day and then they figure like then they are usually stuck they don't want to drop it because then they'll be falling back to masters and you know getting a job would be very difficult because yeah, yeah that's some exam or whatsoever industry people will ask for the experience and all that you know this hardcore research experience so yeah it's always a rat race after msc yeah. like we just follow like what other yeah. people are doing and we just follow them without knowing whether it is of our interest yeah, or not exactly. so just give yourself some time even if you drop out or like wait for some time and just give yourself some time think about it and people here do that like so much mm -hmm. after exactly. doing bachelors yeah. they just stop uh, everything and they are like it okay we'll now think and we'll see we'll figure out what we have to do and that is such a good thing I think. yeah it's, it's a very good practice indeed like rather than jumping here and there because uh like if i uh, talk about myself i wanted to do phd for sure but i have seen people uh they just join phd program for fellowship it's a it's the biggest blunder you will do it to yourself please I mean, like i keep on quoting again and again that don't do it don't do it for fellowship at least like because you cannot survive in the field and then it's better to take a pause figure it out prepare for something and get it and regarding the master's degree as palak mentioned like uh mtech because I know there are a lot of friends from MTech background from IIT Delhi. So I know. So uh, for M M what MTech degree will do, it can open up the, you know, uh, opportunities to move into an industry or mm -hmm. continue research. So it's a, it's a good way to give yourself a time while pursuing some degree and then figuring it out, like what's next for you, what suits you. So it can be a one way, but if you're sure shot, you can switch directly to PhD program. You don't have to. And also you will be paid. So so that's the plus. It's point. a win-win situation from yeah, every so angle. So degree also and the fellowship also, and then you will be getting a chance to figure it out what exactly you want from your life. Yeah. So of course a win-win situation. So mm -hmm. I pause it here and then we'll join in another session and then we'll see. Okay. okay. So yeah, Palak. Uh, so uh, the next question is like how students manage their, you know, funds, like the daily expenses. Like before that, can you tell me like, uh, since you uh, told us about how to apply and all that stuff. So is it uh, mandatory for a student to fetch a funding position over there or there can be any other way to pursue PhD in the US? Like how how it is like the regarding the funding, funding of your PhD program? So all the PhD positions are mostly fully funded. The professor is going to pay you from the project he's handling because most of these pro projects are NIH or NSF funded. So they have funds and only if they have funds, they will take you as a PhD candidate. So you have to work for them on the same project. You won't have a choice to uh, do something of your own. You can, but on the similar lines, like oh, you have to do that. So uh, but the professor will say. Okay, so it's already decided, the, like, project and everything. The mm -hmm. funding is sorted. 
you just have to mm -hmm. apply and then if yeah. you are selected you have to work on that project which is being funded and so it mm -hmm. works like that yeah it's is always like other... a mutual yeah is, is there any other uh, way to like to it because as an india you know there is no as such you know a already decided project because we get it from you know either the csir stuff or the uh ugc they just provide you the funding to assist you and then a uh, topic are usually uh, mutually discussed with the professor and then on later stages you know it's it's not always like already the phd topic has been decided for you so is there any other way uh, in us or it's like this is one straight away yeah. i think it's like a broad topic has been it will always be given to you in the beginning to work with okay uh, but once you pass your candidacy exam so that is also like a different thing uh, in different universities mm -hmm. like for first two years you will be taking the coursework you will be just like a master's student and you can al also go away with the master's de degree of continuing in the PhD program. Okay. So some people do that as well. Uh, but once you complete that two-year coursework, you have to pass the candidacy exam, uh, which is different in different universities. Like it can be related to the coursework. It can be related to the research work, uh, like some random research project you can think of and try to build your own proposal. So okay. in our university, it works like that. Like we build our own proposal and that's independent proposal. And there will be three professors uh, in your committee and they will be asking you questions on the basis of that hypothetical proposal. Mm -hmm. So once you pass that, then there is another thing called dissertation proposal. So you generate your own proposal. So there will be like a broad topic given to you by your professor, but you need to have like three different aims or four aims. Mm -hmm. So there will be like three, four projects you will be working on. And those will be decided and designed by you. Oh. So you will have that much liberty to do whatever you want to with oh. that project. Oh. Yeah. So, so it works like, like so here I'll I'll quote the exposure will be somewhat better. Like the training would be somewhat better that you have to generate yeah. your own uh, hypothesis in very early stage so it mm -hmm. is always a you know good practice to start with because in phd or after phd you have to do that so uh, start as early as uh, possible so that's all yeah i, I really like that thing in my university because that's not there in most of the universities the independent proposal general thing uh, but they always like you get a lot of confidence once you pass that exam you feel like okay you are in a position to handle like how to design a proposal for yourself how to work on research projects and uh, always like critically question whatever you are doing that kind of questioning everything comes from that independent proposal exam okay. um, so also you can be like a ta or an ra in the lab you can be a teaching assistant or a research assistant so what if you are a teaching yeah yeah so if you are a teach teaching assistant you will you will be like um working in labs proctoring exams for students and uh you know grading assignments um taking labs for i think students early grad students so it's it's for the university yeah. but if you are working uh, as a research assistant you will be always working in the lab there will be students who will be working under you they can be like high school students summer interns or like grad students undergrad students uh, they will come in the lab work with you on their projects that they have in their mind maybe or they can help with your project okay. so there are like two two kind of positions so you can always ask your professor if he has enough funding to support you uh, as a research assistant or it will be a ta position for you so yeah these kind of questions you can raise put up initially okay so like uh, the conclusion is the phd positions will be fully funded so mm -hmm. you'll be paid and then uh, you can of course ask as palas palak said like uh, about the ta and the ra positions too that can aid you in your funding and continuing this like uh, palak is it like is the fellowship enough to to you know uh, to bear all your life expenses in that particular area or so like uh, or do uh, you as a student has to do anything else to support your living or like how how easy it is how difficult it is um so every university have a stipend set for their phd students and it also depends 
from which area that university is based like if it is in the midwest or west coast east coast so depending on the expenses that you will have in those areas your stipend will be set okay it is low like it comes under in the low category but it will be enough to support your rent your other expenses or health insurance that you have to pay every semester it will be enough and you will be able to save it as well save some amount of money from that as well um if you cook food at home then yeah you can save more but if you are always eating outside then out <laughs> it would but be. you can save okay. yeah everything is like planned accordingly uh for that specific area so i think it's, so it's to this that. i can recall one question like i'll be adding mm-hmm. here so i received one uh, question from a from a student and he was asking will uh, the uh, the funding like the stipend uh, can support a family like suppose if he is bringing his spouse or something like that so, so will- we are on f1 visa and if you bring your spouse uh, the person will be on f2 visa and as far as i know people who are on f2 visa they cannot work they cannot legally work outside so it will be just you feeding your family so it will be difficult i would say with that stipend um, i i think it will be difficult so it's it's yeah. like so the takeaway is it's better to uh, you know have like to stay like, as a single yeah so family. yeah maybe maybe when he's like in the end of his phd and like looking for jobs then plan on bringing whoever from the family because he knows like he'll be getting a job soon and then it will be an easy situation okay but still like if they can manage like an apartment that like they can live in an apartment that shared between people so he can pay less rent so that way things can be managed, can be managed but uh, yeah bit difficult. but it is yeah it is difficult okay okay so now coming to the final question and it is like my <laughs> i was more curious about it so i want to know about like how is the life of a phd student in us since you quoted about that coursework because in iit system people who don't know so iit uh, institutes also have that coursework we have to you know clear yeah. some course uh, courses uh, secure some grade i think it should be above 7 cgpa 7 or 7.5 cgp above and then mm-hmm. only you can you know eligible for a, as a phd student and then you can you know start your so uh, so like i i want to know like how the social life is how like how hectic the courses work are there in us universities and since you, as she has already told about like the dissertation and all that stuff so it it needs it needs a lot of preparation and all that stuff so regarding coursework i want to know more about it and mm-hmm. of course the social life how how good it is how bad it is do we feel isolated or like it it can be you know uh, no it will be as fun as we are back there in india so how like can you bring a contrast to it so uh, answering your first question related to the coursework thing so when you join some university like i am talking about my university it may be different in other university so when i joined uh, i think the first year went by just like figuring out stuff like mm-hmm. uh, seeing like how taxes are filed in the first year you don't have to but still like mm-hmm. seeing what people are doing then um, also go offices for ssn that is the social security number you need to get that um, then the driver's license thing like there are a lot of tiny tiny that you need to figure out on your own because you don't know anyone when you are here in a country where you don't have like so many friends uh but yeah the first year the month will be like that figuring out stuff and also in our university we have to have uh, also pass some entrance exams so they had like four exams organic inorganic biochemistry and physical chemistry exams um once you pass that and uh, there will be a scorecard generated so depending on whether you have passed it with good grades or not uh, they will assign you uh, courses for the two years but even if you will pass those it doesn't mean that you won't take the coursework but that will be something you can decide for yourself suppose you have not taken up some course say related to biochemistry or say carbohydrate chemistry or uh, like we never learned about carbohydrate chemistry the way they taught us here uh, that was completely different so yeah those courses you can pick like nanotechnology course or something like that not like 
totally organic inorganic yeah. or physical so, uh, you so, know program specifically yeah so i can understand mm-hmm. yeah so you can pick yeah. grade your skills rather than just reading mm-hmm. the organic chemistry as in you have already yeah. studied in your bachelor's and in master's so uh, so iit yeah. also and because i can uh, like bring that point here because iit has somewhat us based systems also the mm. implementation work like since i am not i haven't joined any us university i cannot exactly bring the contrast but they are somewhat on the same they try to balance out they try to make it like how us like the culture in the university work but of course like things can be different you can have a very different uh, you know and as palak mentioned that you have to figure out a lot of stuff when you planned here so i i just want to add see it would be difficult indeed it would be difficult but but then you'll grow as a person you won't grow but but i think we even if we are in india it's not always like uh, you know rose all the time even if you are surrounded by friends and family there might be some other troubles maybe your research is not working and you are again like frustrated or whatever you can never tell like it will always be it's like perfect. happy and there is no yeah problem. so that's the thing happens here it's just that you are away from your parents away from your friends family then and then it's easy. like a new culture and everything so i would just say like give yourself some time to get adapted to this kind of environment and then try to meet more people make more friends initially because they they will last long i feel that's what happened with me okay. so like whatever friends like just meet more people talk to them uh, okay. yeah i think that really helps or cook food invite friends over yeah you need to social like if you want to be sane here you need to be social talk to more people that will like, help that's the summary like so once see uh getting a phd program is one thing and surviving into a phd program is all together a different thing and you have to ace in both right so as palak mentioned these are some of the tips she shared with us like socialize and make friends and everything so so your your both life can be balanced like work life and mm-hmm. your you know personal and that social life it is very important here i feel yeah. because otherwise like just research research more. yeah that, that's that's not good. good that's not help for your even in in india some people like who are who wants to be highly isolated maybe it's their way i am not judging here like everybody mm-hmm. has some are low some are highly social some are selectively social but what i am trying to say here is like in that research field now since failure at 99% it, it's it's going to fail mm-hmm. only one person you will get some breakthrough and you will publish it or something like that but then 99% you have to be surrounded by at least some of you know good people be it family be it your friends so that who can you know keep keep pushing you okay keep just do yeah i think one or two real friends are enough you don't yeah. have to have like a yeah. huge group That's of friends yeah, yeah, yeah i'm yeah. not saying that exactly. but like some real friends yeah. always motivating you and cheering for you that that's enough i would say yeah so that that's really true thank you palak yeah thank you for your time yeah. these are the questions timing in 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 case if we get uh, more questions so i'll ask for your time again yeah, and i'll be happy to answer okay. anytime we can have another session or session okay. come to you thank you <laughs> Uh, in advance because I really wanted to do the dart session because people don't know about it okay and how to figure yeah. it out because since one uh, if you if you tell about dart on very similar lines there are many programs some exchange program mm-hmm. I know about right Fulbright also which carry out this exchange so, and I'm knowing a lot of those scholarships from you so thank you for that too <laughs> waiting for the results <laughs> I I really wish that it worked like it. it yeah, you will be the first worked. person knowing about it. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I because I keep on googling, I come across something, then I try to do it, and then I post on oh, this. Yeah, and you it. share it, so that's the best thing. Yeah, like I we will know it. about it. So, so because it's it's I think it's good to share because I think. Yeah. you know we are always sitting in a four wall we don't know what is there outside and mm-hmm. if, if we'll tell some other people can definitely use it and you know can uh, he or she can build her cv onto that and mm-hmm. at the end everybody wants to you know 
do well in their career that is why we all yeah everyone to wants to people. excel in their yeah. fields so and yeah it is all for the good cause so yeah, yeah. yeah so that's the aim and then yeah we'll invite her again for that yeah. for sure and then if you are be having other questions i uh, will be addressing that anything like anything if you have some doubt regarding uh, pursuing phd in us in particular she can definitely help you and she can you can reach out to her on linkedin also suppose right see, i'm not a very right person to address all these questions. questions because i only try to address those questions which are based on my experience because i don't want to you know give you any false or oh, just googling or just say random stuff people do that i don't want to do that because i haven't experienced it i don't have that real experience like real information so it's it's dangerous to just you know spread it so it would be always nice to contact a person who has already done it be it some fellowship program be it something so you can contact her on she is on linkedin she is active there yeah. so you can uh, search her name palak sundi and you will uh, you can just message her and in her free time she'll try to address it mm-hmm. and don't think that you will be getting uh, you know response in just within a minute it it it's yeah not just bad. wait <laughs> everybody is busy just wait because i usually but i'll definitely to... get back to whoever will message yeah, because, yeah. because, because I... i was in this position sometime back so i really want like even people benefit from yeah, yeah. so that's yeah. our aim because we 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 all have gathered information build uh, you know structure over it and then say it's not like nobody has you know provided us all the information in a plate and just this is here for right. you right? it won't work that way so that is our aim and i'm happy that palak has same mindset so she'll be helping mm-hmm. you out but give some time because i sometimes find people what because of course they'll be in a bad situation or someone but then they keep on pinging and then they got to fill it also when i'm not reply so right? please give some time because uh, we are not free okay we try to do it like when we get say on weekend or something like that but we'll definitely try to address it and if not personally then we'll try to make a you know a video posted mm-hmm. so that similar yeah if you have video. like any questions regarding any specific detail like how to write an email sometimes students mm-hmm. don't yeah. know like they have so much in their mind but they don't know like how to put it in words so if you have any questions like to share so so like we can share the draft with you that we have exactly, to the professors yeah. the sops that we have sent Uh, so, so yeah, yeah she can help you in whichever she, she way can be an asset to you like in especially in applying you know a phd positions abroad the documentation and everything she can help you out there and if needed uh, we can request her to make a video so that Mm-hmm. rather than addressing you know individually she can make yeah. a video and we can post it whether she'll mm-hmm. create her own platform or through this or she can share it on linkedin whatsoever what we'll see it but uh, she can do it and i we i we, we both hope that it will be beneficial to you so we are ending this session and yeah it was a oh session yeah. informative for students yeah so thank you palak thank you for joining and thanks I'm for inviting you thank you so much and good to see you like good to see yeah, you same here. on this platform <laughs> so it's good yeah so i'm ending the session okay yeah so take care yeah bye bye bye